everybody. This is Margaret from Sacramento Art Classes. Um, major technical difficulties tonight. We're having a live class like now and um, I have so many things going wrong. So um, let's just cross our fingers and if you have never met me, um, I am an art teacher here in Sacramento and um, I am getting ready to teach this watercolor class, which is a free class tonight, and we're painting this. It is um, frog prints. So if you just hang in there, I see that some of you are there and watching, but I'm having weird trouble in um, uh, here online. So here's what we're going to try to do. I'm going to get it figured out, and I'm going to put my camera facing down on the table, um, and hopefully things will straighten themselves out. So while you're hanging in there, I'm going to tell you what to do and what to gather and what to expect, but it's going to look really ugly for, for a while until I get this figured out. I can't quite fix it with the technology that I have going on today. So we're going to do our very best. <laughs> um, I am not going to try and put my face back on the video like I normally do. Normally I like to say hello to you and, um, show my face but I guess you saw it a little bit at the beginning and we're gonna need to be okay with that for tonight because sometimes things just don't go as planned and we have to just make the best of it so I guess it's a free class and <laughs> we'll just be okay thank you for hanging in there okay let's get started tonight we are painting this beautiful frog here it is called it is the frog prince which um, is a movie in the Disney world but also it is a fairy tale from my childhood and probably people who are older than me from their childhood as well and so as we go along I'll maybe talk a little bit about the fairy tale um, but let's get ourselves going for now I have paints um, of various colors frog colors sky and dirt colors I have my brushes the majority of what I'm going to be using tonight is going to be probably this number um, eight round or sorry number 12 round brush I'm using a Skoda brushes tonight you could use whatever you have um, and I am will probably also use an eight and a six so these are a little bit more of my my detail brushes the six which is the red one is a, about the size of maybe a fingernail polish brush maybe a little bit smaller than that so those are my brushes for tonight I always like to have um, a paper towel or a rag or something off to the side uh, to blot and wipe my brushes. Um, you should have a pencil for drawing this. I did not provide the sketch this time around, but um, it's a real easy one. So have a pencil. I've pre-drawn mine ahead of time a couple of different ways. So I have drew this. You can barely see it, but I'm going to go over this with a Sharpie. So don't use a Sharpie yet. I will be using a Sharpie first so you can see it. But then this one is different than the others in that after we do our pencil drawing, I am going to ask you to do some outline with Sharpie. But I think that the ultra fine Sharpie, which has a real precision tip, or this one, which is a Micron 05, anything that is a permanent fine point pen, it needs to be permanent because the watercolor will get this wet and will bleed all over the place. So. Um, if you have only just a normal Sharpie, you can use that too. It's just that you'll have a thicker line. So if you take a look at my sample again, you can see that it is outlined in Sharpie. If you don't have any of these, don't worry. Just go with pencil and you'll be okay. Um, I am on a little bit of a delay. So what I'm saying right now, I see it on my screen uh, 10, sometimes even 10, 12, 15 seconds later. So if I ever get out of the picture, um, it may take me a second to notice that because my monitor doesn't show me that happening right away. One last thing that you will need tonight is some salt. Um, you can use just normal table salt. I have sea salt here. Um, you could use uh, um, kosher salt, which is kind of nice because it's a little bit thicker, coarser, and it gives us a kind of a more interesting feel, but just have a little pinch of salt too. So let's, um, let's get started. And then as we go along, I'm going to kind of make other announcements and just tell you different things about me, especially if you don't know anything about who I am or what I'm doing. So that'll come uh, all along. And I'll also try to keep my eyes on the comment stream. So if you have a question, I try to answer it while we're in class together. 
Um, and please, if this is your first time, give us a try again another day because the next time I promise it'll be way more professional. You won't uh, see so much cord and so much weirdness. It will be way more put together. But like I said, I'm having new, uh, new different technology this time. And so I kind of have to get used to things. Looks like the lighting is pretty decent though. So yay for that. Okay, so let's get started. Um, my drawing is going to be, um, first I'll show you the practice one, but my main drawing is on arches. This is rough watercolor paper. It's nine by 12. So that's the size that I'm gonna do. And I have done the drawing, including this ball. It's probably hard for you to see in pencil here. Um, but I'll show you both versions with the ball and without the ball in case maybe you don't want it. But in the story, there is a ball and um, that's why I have added it in here. So let's get started. I have mine drawn lightly in pencil, but let's just pretend I don't have it pencil drawn at all because you're gonna be drawing along with me. Um, so you're in pencil, I'm using Sharpie just so you can see me. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit for you. Will it let me, there we go. I'd like you to have a little bit better view of this. So again, I'm on a delay. I have to wait a second to make sure that um, it's going to let me zoom in as much as I might want it to be. Um, this, uh, Leslie, you're asking me, is this available later? Yes, it will be recorded. I'll post it here on Facebook indefinitely. It'll probably be up for at least two or three months. So you can um, watch it anytime you want or share it with friends. It will be up on my Facebook page recorded after tonight's live class. Okay, so let's get started with your pencil. You're going to want to be at about the middle of the paper. So right about the halfway point of the paper is where we're going to position the about the eye and the top of the head. So right, you're kind of in the middle of the paper. I'm going to start with the crown and I am slightly to the left of the vertical center. I'm at the horizontal center, but I'm slightly to the left of the vertical center. And I want to do a little like curve like this. This is the top of the crown. Little curve, not, not like a rainbow, but way more subtle than that. And at each end of the curve, I'd like you to put a little scoop. This one's kind of like a C and that one's like a part of a capital letter D. And then up from those, let's go ahead and have kind of backwards parentheses here. This is forming the crown. Hi, Lori. And then above that, we're gonna do another kind of curve. It's parallel to that first curve and slightly longer, just the tiniest bit and give us those little parentheses that kind of capital letter C and the, and the part of the letter D and then we'll put a top on it. So it's a parallel line and it can skip if you want. It's kind of, it's just the, um, the, the lip or the decoration on the crown. So I put a little bit on the bottom too, just kind of give it some three dimensionality. Okay, now the crown has uh, seven points on it. Four of them are closer to us. So if you can see my pencil drawing at all, it's this one, this one, this one, this one. They're closer to us. So on the painting, you can see that they're painted more of a lighter yellow color. And these three that are kind of the farther side, the farther away from us, they fall into the middle of each of these. And I painted them a little brownish yellow on that. So I'll go back and forth between these two so you get the idea. But in order to get this going, we're gonna put a slightly outward swooping line here and there. This forms the front and the back of the crown. And then you're gonna follow this line. I'm gonna start, I, might, I know my hand is covering over on the left, on the right side, but we're gonna start close to this and come down as far as you like and then swoop it back up in like, kind of like a letter U or maybe a, a V with sort of a curved V instead of a pointy V. Okay, and then let's go to this guy, the farthest right, wanna do the same thing. You're going close, down as far as you like, and you're gonna swoop that up into kind of a V over there.
Can you guys hear me okay? Um, if you want a thumbs up or something, if my microphone is good for you, because I did not have a chance to test it out ahead of time. I apologize for that. But if you have a free minute and you want to do a smiley face or some type of thumbs up or something, just let me know. That'd be great. Okay, and now we have one more V to do. So we're going to go close to this guy here and come down in the middle and curve it back up and get close to that. Thank you for those happy faces and everything. And Linda says, yes, cool. It's good to be back. I'm finishing up the school year. Friday is the last day of school. And then I'm out for summer. But summer has lots to do, so it's not going to be super, super vacation relaxing time. Okay, so we've got these four in the front. Almost looks like four fingers, right? And now we want to do this guys in the middle. So we're going to come up. In the middle I leave these slightly shorter than the others slightly in fact this guy right here probably should be a little bit longer and then the, we do one in each one of those spaces so there's going to be three of them and they come up in between each of those four front guys and you notice that I did not put anything on the tops yet because I want you to as we're drawing the rest of it Take your time and kind of think about what you might want to have up on there. You can have the same exact thing on every one, or you could have a different thing on each one. It's up to you. So if you have a personal symbol or something that is meaningful to you, you can pop it up there. And, um, and But this gives you time to think about it. So when you do know what you want, feel free to add it. So there we go with that. Now let's go on to the frog body. Uh, we're gonna start with the face. And just right here on the left side of the crown, I'll do a little tiny bit of a downwards line. This is where his brow, I guess, comes. And then here comes his little snout out like this. And then I'm gonna curve it around down to about here. I have about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter maybe, probably an inch and a half over here of paper on the left hand side. You don't have to have your frog maybe bigger or smaller than mine, but I'm just telling you what I've got. And so to keep him kind of centered, I'm gonna have his little froggy butt be about that far away from the edge over here on the far right. So he has a very warty back, here's the sample. So as I go down his back, I'm going to put these little bumps in and you can have as many or as few. Maybe you don't like warts at all. So if you don't, you don't have to have any, but basically they're just little bumps. Maybe you'll go for a while with just kind of a little wiggliness and not really a spelled out bump, or maybe you have a couple big ones in there. It's up to you. Give him a smooth patch here maybe. And then I'm gonna end on his little froggy butt where it sort of curves around like that. Okay, then let's get the face out of the way because that's kind of easy. Um, we start a little bit below the point of the snout here and we have a line that comes over and you can make him happy or sad or whatever, but he has a long mouth that comes probably a little more than to the middle of the crown or maybe right about to the middle of the crown. It's up to you, you can give him a great, great big mouth. And then at the end of that is this circle here, which I believe is kind of like an ear or something. So I put a circle there. Then his eye and the, um, the surrounding tissue around the eye is bigger than that circle that we just drew. So here's your sample. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw that surrounding part and it's kind of I don't know what you want to call it. I stop it about there. I don't go all the way around. It's a, it's like a C pointing down towards the ground. And that's kind of the around. And then inside of that, it doesn't matter if it is perfectly round or has a little different shape to it, is the eye. And then the, I believe the frog pupil is kind of more of an oblong. So there is 
my eye. We got a little nostril right here. And then um, uh, I'm going to show you how to draw it with the ball, but just in case you don't want the ball, it's kind of the same thing. It's just that you're going to make this back leg touch the ground instead of be resting on the ball. So I always think it's easiest to have the ball first. And since you're working in pencil, you would be maybe circling in, let me cap this. You would be circling your pencil in the air before you touch it on the paper. I like to get the motion kind of going in the air. And then when I'm ready, then I touch it down on the paper and I kind of really sketchy, sketchily, sketchily draw that circle. Of course you could trace something. I think mine is about the size of a quarter. So you could trace something if you don't want to draw. But for me, since I'm working in Sharpie, I, I cannot do that sketchiness because it will leave these extra marks. So I showed you how to do it, and now I'm just going to do about this much. I messed it up, but there we go. I'm going to do about that much with my Sharpie so that I leave room for the fingers. Sorry, I messed it up on you. Okay, now the fingers have kind of like a ball at the, at the end of each one or like an enlargement of sorts. So um, I first kind of give myself these little round fingertips, kind of like ET. And then here it comes, it's resting over the top of the ball. And let's have it joined down to here. This guy that we had before, this line that we did coming down from his little chin and neck is about where it goes. We'll join those up in a second, but just to give you kind of a point of where to be, it's there. And then we're going to do the next finger. My pen is drying up. And the next finger. I'll stop right there to let you catch up. Anytime we stop, it's time for me to eat a chocolate chip because that's my jam. I always like to have the chocolate going somewhere. Okay, so now I'm going to leave this hanging right here. I'm not going to finish that hand just yet because I want to get this other one going first. So I do the same motion with my pencil if I'm kind of a little unsure to create this shoulder. It's farther out than the end of the mouth. So I just sort of kind of think of it like a chicken leg or something. It's got the shoulder coming out and down. So to draw it with this so you can see, it comes out and goes about down to here and has just like the slightest little curve at the bottom. And then we want to get the back side. I don't like to make a full circle. I like to kind of start lower down on the arm here and turns about here. If you're unsure where to turn it, the turn happens like, imagine this is the belly under here. We haven't drawn it yet, but it turns at about where the belly crosses behind. So if, if that's too hard for you to kind of visualize, what you can do is you can extend this neckline, join it up with that wrist and stop it about here. And then you'll see kind of where that belly is so that you can make your arm extend. And when you're ready, you're going to continue this. Give yourself that front finger or front hand. And you can make really exaggerated, long, funny fingers if you want to. If you just joined in, you guys are doing this in pencil. I'm doing it in Sharpie so that you can see better. And then this, from where we had this wrist, it's going to come and join up and kind of meet up where that other arm is. And then our belly line here goes behind this arm and it comes back out 
on this side and we're going to stop it at about there. I may extend it in just a second, but just kind of give, gives you an idea. Then we go back to those kind of pencil motions in the air. And so I'm doing almost like a, what is this shape? Oval shape. I'll draw it for you first, but I'm not going to do all that with my Sharpie. So it's kind of an oval shape and that gives you the feel of how this leg would be. And can you see that I did almost like a dashed line when I did use the Sharpie? I'm not really spelling out that whole leg. I'm just giving a couple indicators of where that leg would be. So as I Sharpie this one, I want to get this round part in the front and have it connect down where the belly is. And then maybe I'll just do a few skips up here or something. It's not real crucial. This is just for fun. And then it's going to come back around here and give a little curve. When you're ready, let's make that back leg comes down. We got this long toe. These are even longer than the front ones because these are his swimming legs. Three toes. The, the foot that's up on that ball only shows two. Oh no, I did show three toes on that. Sorry, on one of my other ones, I only put two toes because I'm imagining the other toes around the back side. And once you draw your three toes like this, you're going to continue that toe way all the way back here, way back, way back, because that makes that nice long leg that can extend. If you want to, you can put some webs in here, just like that. I didn't put any on the front, but you could. Okay, and that's all for the frog, except we need here where the ball is let's do some let's show where the land is back behind it or the ground so here's a line and it's going to cross behind the frog and come out on this other side if you're worried about it being even you can get a ruler and um, kind of line it up so that it comes out both sides of the frog evenly so you have that and then maybe you want to do a little bit of a little line underneath here so this looks like it's kind of resting on something you don't have to do that if you don't want to because you can handle that with the paint later. And, um, and that's it for your drawing. So now, while you are tracing this with Sharpie, I have pre-drawn another one onto my watercolor paper and I'm gonna trace that with Sharpie. This time I'm using, actually I'm using a Micron pen, so it's a finer point. The one I just did for you is a normal Sharpie. And I want this to be a finer point, so I'm going to talk and go fast while I do it. So you should be tracing yours with whatever your marker is, too, while I do mine real quick. And um, then we'll get into painting here. Um, if you have already thought of what you want to put on the tops of your crown, this is the time that you need to do it. Because our first job in painting tonight is going to be the sky. And so you're going to need to have everything ready to go on this crown so that you can paint your sky kind of around whatever you have on the crown. So I'm just going to do that for now. Go on to the rest of this guy. I know I'm going quick, but we only have, I'm trying to shorten these up. We ended up always going long before. And so my goal on this new series is we're going to try and do a lot of things in about an hour because I had technical difficulties tonight I don't know if I can make that happen especially because we're half an hour in already but we'll see what happens so this is the one I was telling you about where the hand only has two fingers on it um, sorry I think I need to zoom out so you can see let me see here Sometimes the, there we go. Um, what was I going to say? Forgot what I was going to say. It'll come back to me. Okay, so I'm being a little bit more careful with this one on the ball. When we start painting, I'm going to tell you the story a little bit if you don't know it and what this ball is about. In my case, the ball, there's a line here that would show through. This little bitty line here of the land. 
And let me just use my ruler to line it up. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because he's sitting maybe in the dirt or something, you know. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, bumps coming back. Um, speaking of these bumps, as you draw them, you can do things like this. You can make some of them become more rounded or add some circles in so that you have the feeling of some actual wartiness. I'll show you on the sample in a minute. Every once in a while here and there, I'm kind of making almost a full circle to indicate the wart. So on the sample, it looks like this. I'll try to go side by side. So you can, you know, pop in a few warts here and there in the body. And so those of you who are fast and you've already done all this, you could be taking up your time with doing some of these warts here. And the other thing that you could be doing if you're ahead of the game is you want to erase away all of the pencil marks that you have left behind. So once you put your, unless of course you're only using pencil, if you aren't doing pen, yeah, you need to leave your pencil there. But if you're outlining with pen, um, go back and take all your pencil marks out. It just makes for a cleaner, cleaner looking painting. Couple more bumps. And you can have as many or as few. Maybe he has some of like in his armpit here. It's up to you. I like to get them in ahead of time because um, I'm going to be making them a little bit different color and so it's nice to have them already identified. So it helps the drawing here, but that's about it. I'm, that's all I'm going to do on that. Okay, so I said you got to have all your tops. For sake of time, I'll probably do my tops diamond heart or diamond uh, star, just because it's faster. So I do my diamonds like this. I do kind of like an arrow shape. Do I want to do it like that? Yeah. And then I'm going to bring them in like this. I guess it's a diamond. It's like a spear, maybe. I'm not sure what it is. And so then, since I'm doing the front here, so let's see, it'd be diamond, star, diamond, star, diamond, star, diamond. Okay, it'll, yeah. We'll see what happens. I don't know. And you can, you know, invent these and have some fun. They don't have to be all perfect. There is no perfect. It's just whatever is fun for you. One. Ooh, that one got a little bit messed up. It's like a Christmas tree almost. It's okay though. I think maybe I'll have to do something different on the back. Um, uh, maybe not. We'll just we'll just go with it. I did this with fourth graders, and they all came up with different things. They wanted to have different stuff on there and so it kind of you know it might look better if you do different things but I thought I had a nice pattern but I didn't do enough um, of these shapes to make a pattern happen boy what a night okay anyway there we go so that's the most important thing is to have them all ready to go because we have sky next so give me please a couple of thumbs up when you're ready because I'm really trying to be conscious of the time tonight so we make sure we have everything ready to go. So while I'm watching for that, I'm just using a white eraser, looks like this, to erase away any of the pencil that I have left behind. I like to use the pencil up on its edge like this because it almost, instead of going back and forth, it just sort of sweeps away all of the pencil marks. And then I'm gonna rub it over here onto the floor, vacuum that up later. And that's pretty good and clean. A few little pieces. Okay. Are we about ready, maybe? This is what we're going for. 
You can take your paint all the way out to the edge of the paper if you want to, or you can leave it like this where there's a little bit of white paper showing. It's just a style choice. Do it however you want. But the sky is going to come first, and the salt that I asked you to have is for the sky. You can see that kind of sparkly sort of mottled effect in the sky. When you paint sky or any kind of darker color and sprinkle salt in it, it has that effect, and that's what we're going to go for. And I need to do that first because it's a great big area and we need it to dry while we're working on the other stuff. So um, remember, if I'm going too fast, this is going to be recorded. It is being recorded as we speak, but um, it will be up on Facebook uh, for quite some time. So you can watch it later or go back to it if you get a little bit um, stressed out because I have to go as fast as I'm going. So you can come back to it later if you need to and rewatch. I zoomed in a little bit. Okay, so I am I did grab my largest brush right now, which you probably don't have this size. This is a 20, it's pretty big, but take whatever is your largest brush. We're doing the sky in a technique called wet into wet. So that means the paper gets wet before we put any paint on it. Do not get anything wet right now that you don't want to have blue paint on. So paint around the crown, paint around the frog, don't paint the ground. You can see I'm not going all the way close up to the frog because I have this great big brush. I'm using this for sake of time because I can cover a greater area faster with this big brush. And then I'm going to switch to my smaller guy and go into all these little crevices. And this takes some time to do. So you, I, I will be repainting some of this that's our, I'm wetting it now. I will have to repaint some of it because it'll dry out faster than I can go. And so I'm sure that's going to happen for you guys too. So I'm just using this large brush to get as much as I can going now. And now I'm going to switch to my number 12 and I need to put on some glasses for this because I have to tilt my paper here and there to look for the reflection of the um, light on the water on the water on the paper. Okay, so you're going to see me tipping a little bit. I'm trying to get really close up. I'm trying to outline this crown and it's a lot of work. It's detail. If you don't get it all the way up to the edge right now, don't fret because once we have it nice and wet and we start adding the blue on, we'll know any places that we accidentally left dry and we can go in with our brush and just touch those up. But we're, for now we're doing this and the reason is because it's way easier to paint a large section of sky like this if you pre-wet it because the paint is going to travel around without you really helping it. It's going to go to all of the wet places. So if you accidentally get the crown or one of these jewels wet, that blue paint is going to travel into that area. So maybe you might want to have a Kleenex handy or something to blot. I like a Kleenex more than a Q-tip, but you may want to blot any overpainted, any blue out of the areas that you don't want it. So that's a potentially, potentially something that could happen is paint going where you don't want it. Normally I would take a lot longer to do this, but again, we, the clock is ticking. And every once in a while, maybe throw some paint, I mean, throw some water on those places that you've already done just to re-wet them because they're drying as as we speak. And if you don't feel steady enough because you can't see what you're doing because it's just clear water, remember again, don't worry about it because we can fix it later by adding paint into the, any areas that we accidentally left dry. And I'm almost done. I'm coming around the back side here, going to all these bumps. It's pretty intricate here, so again, if I have to get it later with my dry brush or my, my, my blue paint brush, then I can. All the way down to the ground. I'm going to the edge of the paper on this one just because it's just easier and I don't have to think about it as much. I'm repainting some sections quickly. They're still damp, but since it's warm here in Sacramento, and since it takes a long time to paint this, they just, they tend to dry out. Okay. So, um, this is what's going to happen. 
we're going to put our blue and possibly some purple if you're into purple into the sky. We're going to work quickly with lots of juicy paint because while it is still wet and has a little bit of a shine to it, it doesn't really work if it's dry. It's got to have a shine to it. Once that paint gets on there, we're going to add the salt. So here I go. Since I'm right near purple, I'm going to put into some purple and just start putting some paint on. I'm going fast. And remember, since it's wet, this paint will travel on its own without you helping it a lot. So I want you to just be concerned with just getting some paint on here quickly, keeping things from getting dried out. Don't go so quick that you splash around, but get it all in there. I will go in with blue in a minute. And if you have to, just put some clear water on again in case some areas have dried up. This is I'm using Daniel Smith paints tonight. I don't get paid by them. Wish I did. I wish I got paid by them. Daniel Smith, if you're listening, I'd love to uh, rep your paints. Um, but anyway, this is Imperial Purple. And it's a beautiful color. If I was using Windsor Newton, I'd probably use Windsor Violet, which is a really common color. It has a beautiful pigment to it. So, okay, so here's a lot of purple. And my paper is still good and wet. You can see that it's streaky purple, we don't care, as long as we keep that paper wet. And so before I even take a breath, I'm gonna get some blue. Um, this is, what is this blue? I can't remember what one this is. But here comes a blue. And I can put it in areas that are still white, I can put it on top of purple, I can take my time and go around some of these little tricky areas. But I'm working fast because I cannot let this dry. And if I have to, like I said, I might slop some water just on there again. Whoops. Good thing that drip landed in the place where I wanted it to land. If you have to switch to a smaller brush, you can do that for these little details. So the story of the frog prince is this. And I don't remember all the details because I haven't read it super recently, but there is this, how does it go? There is this princess and she's playing by, or I think she's a princess, she's playing by the pond or the lake or whatever it is, playing by the water with this golden ball. And she's tossing it up in the air and catching it. And at one point she loses it, it falls into the water and she can see it, but she can't reach it. And um, this frog, comes along or notices and he's he wants a kiss I think it is he wants a kiss from her and she thinks he's gross and she doesn't want to kiss him and so he says um, she's crying her head off because she wants her golden ball and he tells her if if I bring it to you I want you to kiss me and she's like I don't want to do it I don't want to do it I know I'm gonna get this wrong so I feel like he goes and he gets the ball for her and then I can't if I remember right does she kiss him if anybody knows put it in the comments kind of think she doesn't kiss him. I can't remember now. God, what a bad storyteller. Well, anyway, like most stories, eventually if she does kiss him, he's like a prince. He turns into a prince and everything is great and they're happy and joyful, but he realizes what a um, conceited or just not kind person because she's judging him for being a frog when really, in fact, he's like this awesome, wonderful, beautiful, handsome prince. And, um, I guess she somehow learns her lesson. Next time I do this, I better know the story first because it's probably, I'm telling it probably horribly, but that's the idea. So one of the paintings I did, I didn't put the ball in. And then on this one, I thought, oh, we might as well, if it's about this ball, we might as well put it in. So you can see how my paper is still really wet. And every time I touch my paintbrush down, this paint swims around and mixes with what's already there, mixes with that purple. I don't even really have to help it. And that is the beauty of painting wet into wet. So I've gone around everything and now I can have fun and have even more colors. What if I have a different blue this time? This is a uh, phthalo blue. I could have that. Um, Let's see, what else do I have? I have this awesome color in here, I have to find it, called Moon Glow. And it's like a gray purple. Is this my Moon Glow? 
There, I think this is my Moon Glow. All of these are all Daniel Smith colors, but Moon Glow is like this purpley gray and it granulates, so that means like the colors separate out the uh, heavy powdery pigment that's in there to make the color separates out on the paper and then when it dries it's got all these beautiful colors in it that you see as they separate. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm again watching the clock and we have to get the rest of the body going. Um, what other colors do I have? I have uh, ultramarine blue. Can put some of that in. You could put, if you wanted more of a daylight thing, you could have something like a peacock blue or um, cerulean blue. What is that? Here's a deeper blue back here. It's like more of a gray blue. So because it is so wet, this will blend together. It's not going to be so spotty like what you see right now. And I'm going to show you a little trick in just a second after I get some more colors on here. Okay, so it's pretty soupy. It is pretty swimmy, so I can take my paper and tip it. So right now I'm using gravity and I have a little water on my brush. I'm just gonna put a little extra water around. It's just like I'm kind of touching it onto the paper with my brush. And then I'm gonna tilt this so that the paint will run and as it runs, it, all these different colors are blending. You have to be careful doing this because you could accidentally drip onto the frog body and you don't wanna do that. You just wanna have some mixing happening. I don't like to mix with my brush because it becomes too manufactured. I want it to be sort of natural. And then when you get it mixed in a way that you like, that's pleasing to you, like I don't really want that blob of blue there. Then you want to take your salt. And um, I again, I'm using sea salt, but you could use kosher, you could use table salt. Rock salt is cool, it just gives you bigger um, uh, bursts of color. You could use Epsom salt, but here's the amount that I have, and I'm just gonna take this, it needs to be while it is shiny. And if you have something like I do right here, I have a lake. You see this giant puddle here and here because I'm sure your paper is buckling way more than mine and that's normal because as watercolor paper gets wet, it buckles. So you're gonna get these puddles, which is why I like to tip the paper. Okay, so you're gonna take this salt and sprinkle it. Here and there, wherever you like, you don't need to go crazy and do a ton, but you can see maybe on mine as you do this, the salt is um, attracting the paint to itself. So the paint is swimming towards that salt and it's going to, the salt's kind of grabbing onto it. And so you're going to have these little bursts in the sky that are from where your salt is. Um, if your paper is super wet, sometimes the salt dilutes too much and you don't, and you get like more of the salt gets more melty. So if you have a real big lake, sometimes you want to wait a little bit longer. But um, don't wait until the shine is gone. If the shine is gone, it just won't work. Okay, so you can see things are starting to happen on mine. And I don't know, I have a little bit of salt left in my hand. I might as well use it. Otherwise, I could just throw it out. Throw it out for good luck. Okay, and then we leave it alone. We want to let it sit there all the way until it's dry. If you um, pick up the paper and move it now, you're going to disrupt the salt a little bit, so I leave it flat at this point. Um, if, as time goes on, it starts to look like some of these puddles are maybe dissolving the salt more than I want, I might sprinkle a little bit more into those places. But, um, but I'm not going to use my brush up in there at all. Okay, so now we have a lot of work to do while we are letting that sky dry. Um, I'm going to cheat because I'm your teacher and I have to be a step ahead of you. So I am going to use my heat gun and I can't mute myself because I'm recording with my cell phone and I don't know how to do that on the fly like this. But I'm going to use my heat gun to quickly dry. I don't care about the whole sky, but I'm going to dry the part of the sky that touches the frog in the crown because if I try to paint this crown, 
that yellow is going to swim right out into the sky or this green is going to swim right out into the sky. So you could use a heat gun like this if you have one. They have these at Michael's and Harbor Freight and Home Depot and things like that. Or you could use a hair dryer. Um, but I'm going to take a couple of minutes and do that. And I have not seen any comments or questions at all. So if you have any questions, put them sorry my dog is barking put them in the comment area and I can answer them while we're here um, otherwise I'm gonna I'll look back after we're done and see if there's anything that I can answer for you so here comes the heat gun you'll hear a little noise Okay, I'm back. So maybe you could tell when I was drawing that really I was just doing the outline of the frog. It's still very wet up in the whole rest of the sky, but I, for the sake of time, I'm leaving that to dry on its own later. But you can already see what's happening in the sky. Some little bursts of stuff happening over here that kind of look like stars or like fireworks. And um, it will be some version of this, probably slightly different colors because I use different colors but you'll get this type of effect. So you leave that salt on all the way until it's totally dry, maybe by tomorrow. Well, it'll be dry for sure tomorrow. Um, and then you wanna brush it off. If it sticks a little bit, I, you can use a little bit of your, kind of the side of your fingernail to scrape it off or just you know use your fingers. Make sure you don't have hand lotion on because you'll put a, a lot of oil onto the paper. You already have skin oils, but you'll put even more on. Okay, so that is that. So now let's get to the frog. Um, if you uh, are nervous about this because your paper is still wet, I would really suggest to you to maybe just watch for a while and let yours dry or go get a hair dryer because um, you don't wanna do this before your sky area is dry. Otherwise you'll have kind of a disaster. So we, um, that's, that's gonna be my suggestion to you. Okay, let's see, if I let the paper dry naturally, would the sky effect be different? Joy, um, sometimes, yes, sometimes you get a little bit more of the effect when you let it dry on its own. Um, just a little bit, it's, it's not hugely noticeable though. Okay, here we go, froggy. I'm gonna avoid the eye, but I, it's the center part of the eye, but I'm going to, just like we wet the sky, I'm gonna wet the frog everywhere except for that yellow part of the eye. I'm wetting that round circle ear thing. I'm wetting all the warts. If you're nervous, you can stay a little bit away from your blue. You can leave a little bit of a white margin because you can go in with your detail brush later and get any warts that you missed. So that's a way to continue painting with us, but do it cautiously and you won't be left out. You can still paint that way just leave that little margin and um, I'm gonna go down also to the, the the hands I'm not doing the fingers just yet because that is a little bit more detail and a little different so I'm not gonna really wet the fingers if you already did it's not a problem I'm going all the way down to to the fingers but not the fingers themselves I'm using number 12 round By the way, um, when you're done with this, if you want to share it with people, and you can post it 
Um, I have a Facebook group. It's called Sacramento Art Classes Students. So you just look up that. And the only people who can see that are the ones that are in the group. So, and if you're not already in the group, just request to be a member and I will, of course, approve you. Sacramento Art Classes Students. And um, show us your finished work. It's a nice place. You'll get good comments and compliments from people. So um, it's, it's fun to do that, I think. And then I can see your work since we're not all together. Okay. Um, hi, Karen. Welcome. So this is all wet. And now with a couple of different greens or browns or yellows, you can see that I left the belly under here. Um, I let it be pink. So I'm not going to put very much green right there. And I'm not going to put it very much on the lower lip. Um, whatever greens you like. I have um, in the Daniel Smith here, I have serpentine green. I have a, a yellow green, cascade green. So just a variety of greens. This one to me is a little bit like too cheerful. I want him to be more murky. So um, the, what I mean is this. Look at the difference between that green and this green that I'm about to put on here. So you can see this green is more murky and froggy colored. So I prefer that for my guy. But it's nice to have more than one green. So whatever you have is fine. Maybe you want a pink frog, it's up to you. I'm going over all the warts for now. We'll go back later and do something else on the warts. And then I have another green. Here's another one. This one's a little bit more on the yellowy side. It's pretty similar, but just nice to have some variations. Okay, I'm not gonna put anything below that lip there. It will travel there on its own because things are wet, but I don't want to give it too much. So I'm going to go back here on the leg, put some here. And again, as for as long as your paper is still wet, your paint will continue to move. Okay, now I'm on the belly, and for fun, I think it's nice to have a little, not too much, a little hint of pink. So I have a color on here called Quinacridone Rose, which is a beautiful, vibrant pink, but because I really diluted it with water, there isn't much to it on here. I want it to be really uh, light. Let's get some more on there. Oh, I almost forgot this other arm. And see this arm is wet and it's swimming up into the belly. That's okay. I don't worry about that. Okay. Now, while this frog and its green colors are doing its thing, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. I'll use the I'll use my number 6. And whichever color green you like, you can put that into the toes. And remember, they're dry. We didn't get those wet. So you're going to get a nice, tight, clean paint job on there. And they're pretty dark because when you pre-wet your paper, like I did, um, it dilutes your paint. But when you're painting on dry, like I am with the toes, your paint is not diluted. And so you have this stronger concentration of very... Uh, a lot of pigment in your fingers and toes or whatever it is that you're painting on your dry paper. So for the summer, anybody who has kids or is bored themselves, if you go on my YouTube channel, I have a lot of free stuff up there. I have about six of these used to be um, the ones that we're doing here on Facebook Live. I took them off and um, some of them are free on YouTube. So just look up Margaret Blanchfield and you'll see some of those up there just for free. You'll also see a lot of videos. I think there's over 60 videos that I made for 
the kids I teach at school when we first started COVID. So there's all kinds of just art projects, all different kinds for different ages or for adults if you want, um, that are in there for you to do in the summer if you want. And if you don't see what you like there, you can go onto my website, which is sacramentoartclasses.com, and you can find even more videos like this, but they're $10. So they used to be free on Facebook. I left them up for, some of them were up for a year, and I pulled them all down. And so some of them are free on YouTube at Margaret Blanchfield, or some of them are on sacramentoartclasses.com. So just check out both places. Maybe you'll find enough free things that you are happy um, just over there on the YouTube channel. Okay, so there's the frog. Now his body is still damp. And I think it's nice if the warts have a little slightly different color. So you can see on this one that I already painted, the warts have a little bit of brown to them or even like a yellowy brown. So I'm taking this nice kind of chocolatey brown, I don't remember the name of the color, and I'm gonna just touch it on a little bit. Oh, that's darker than I want. Never mind. I'm gonna go with a, I'll show you the color. I'm gonna go with like a yellow ochre color. It looks like this. Okay, it's right here. So I'm gonna take some of that on this number six brush and just touch it onto the warts. And again, because the warts are still wet and the body is still wet, this color will bleed out into the rest of the body, but it makes a really nice natural effect. It's not like he just polka dotted. He's got warts that are kind of this color and they blend into the rest of his body. I just think it looks nice to let this other color be part of him. And maybe you want some of them to be darker brown or whatever you think. So my belly under here is pretty light. The neck is pretty light. If, that, if you don't care for that, you can always add a little bit more. I think I will give him a little more color down here under the belly. Just a little bit. Okay. Now while you're working on that, I'm going to cheat again with my blow dryer and I am going to dry him off, but first I need, ooh, that's a crazy color. I wanted to try something different, but that's a little bit too neon, so let me cover that up. That was a yellow, like a yellow gold. It was just a little too much for me, so there, this is better. Don't be afraid to try things, though, especially, I mean, it's a free class. You didn't, you didn't uh, lose anything by being with us tonight, so give new things a try. Okay, while I'm drying this and you're catching up, if you have questions, put them in the chat for me. Okay, I mostly dried the feet and this hand that's touching the ball and then just a little bit up here at the crown because you guessed it, I'm trying to dry the parts that are gonna touch other colors so that the paints don't bleed together. So if you need to see side by side, here are the two different froggy options. Hold on a second. And in the new one that I'm painting now, you can see more things are starting to happen with that sky. Boy, the time delay is really crazy. It's about more than 15 seconds difference between what I do and when you guys see it. Weird. Okay. Let's do the crown next because if I do the, the dirt down here, it will, um, my hand will rub all into it while I'm trying to paint. So um, I'm gonna do the crown next. The far away points which are these guys that are in the background, they're gonna be slightly darker color and the front part is gonna be more golden. Um, you can see that I have a lot of, I have some anyway, little speckles of white that should be sky that didn't get painted in the sky. 
don't let that worry to you too much. You don't have to be perfect, perfect, picky on everything. It can be part of your style to be slightly messy or loose. It's better to say loose than messy. Or if you really want to, you can go back and fix them up once everything is dry. But since we're in a hurry, if you take all your time worrying about that little stuff, you won't ever finish this. So I'm going to go wet into wet again. You don't have to. If you hate wet into wet, you can just do this on dry paper. But I like the wet into wet because you get unexpected things sometimes. And if you use more than one color, it'll blend nicely. And it's just, I don't know. I like the way it, it feels when I can watch the paint flow around on its own. And again, if you don't get all the precision up here in these little stars, you'll catch it later when you have paint on your brush. And now that I'm down here, I'm going to just get the rest of the crown. I hope you're having some success with your, uh, the sky. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to use a color called quinacridone gold. It looks really ugly when you look at it on the palette, but it's really very vibrant on the paper. This is what it looks like on the palette. It almost has kind of like a funky yellowy color, yellow green color. But when you paint with it, it looks like this. It's a very vibrant, beautiful gold yellow. So um, I think maybe you couldn't see that. Let me hold it up. There we go. Okay, so that's what I'm going to paint with. Quinacridone gold. Sometimes some brands will call it nickel azo gold. So I'm just touching it on and see how fun it is for it to swim around on its own. And that's all because you, pr you put water down first. And I did not wet those background guys because I'm keeping them a different color. By the way, some of my sky must have gotten wet while I was doing this because maybe you can see right here it's the yellows bleeding into the sky just a little bit and if you don't like that it's always nice to have a Kleenex handy because you can just blot it you have to sort of babysit it sometimes I'm gonna have to keep my eye on that but you can blot it and get rid of some of that um, and and have it more clean look now this is very very yellow if you don't like this much yellow, you can add a little bit of a little tiny bit of brown into it and make it look kind of like an aged or antique look. You can add a little bit of a different yellow. If you have more than one, maybe you use a daffodil yellow and now you rather have something that is more golden yellow. So as soon as I finish kind of cleaning this up, I'll show you what it looks like to add I'll add a brown into it. I have another place up here that is seeping into the sky. So I'll blot that in just a second. Right here. And this happened because the salt is very close right there and the salt drew that paint in. Okay, so there's my yellow. Now if I want, um, I could use that brown that I used in with the warts. And I don't have a whole lot on my brush. I'm just going to touch it on here and there. Let's say I'm going to put some maybe down in here. And I don't know. Oops, maybe here and there along these point these dips. Just places where you feel like. And it just kind of gives it a little bit of an aged look. It'll blend a little bit more together <clears throat> as as it dries. But like I said before, for as long as this paper is still damp, your paint is going to continue to move. Okay, so there's that. And then the background. Do you mind? I'm going to paint it upside down for a second. It just, my hand works better that way. I, there was, the paper was too far and I couldn't rest my hand in a way that was comfortable. So I'm just going to paint these upside down. This paper is still dry. Uh, you could do it wet into wet if you want, or you could do it dry. But I'm just taking that same brown that we already had, and I'm painting the brown onto the dry paper. I'm 
This gives us the feeling that these are farther away. They're like the backside of the crown. Remember, you're doing all of this in just over an hour. If you have been with me from before, which I know a lot of you are back from before, I was doing these for an hour and a half and we really never ever finished things in an hour and a half. So some people were in other states where it was very late for them. Plus it was late for me after a long day at work and then come home and paint at night. So I've decided this time around, I want to try and make these a little bit shorter. So my goal was to try and get us into a close to an hour tonight, but we're going to go a little bit longer. We're at an hour and 10 minutes. And you know what? If I didn't have that technical difficulty, we probably would have been a little bit more on track. Okay, so those guys are brown. And then remember that yellow ochre color that I used on the warts? I'll put a little bit of that into this brown too, just to just give it a little bit more of a yellow look and this is why it's great if you're willing to share what you've done on that um, Sacramento Art Classes students group because people are going to have different ideas and it's so fun to see how we're all doing the same thing but they're all so different and of course your drawing is going to be different than mine because I didn't give you a sketch or anything you had to just draw this on your own Maybe some of you have actual jewel colors up there like I did on the original where look at all these different colors I put on top of the, the crown. But for this one, since we're in a hurry, I just decided to stay with that color. And um, since I'm working with the yellows, I'm going to paint the inside, the whole eye actually, this part all yellow. This is yellow ochre. I painted right over the pupil because I'll go back and get that later with a darker color. And the next thing is going to be, uh, would you rather have the ball or would you rather have the ground next? Somebody type in what you want and whoever says first gets what they want. see anybody yet so if you rather have the ball say ball or if you'd rather have the ground say ground otherwise I'm gonna decide maybe you're are you still there it says 14 people are here hmm. oh, ball thanks Linda okay so for ball you have to make sure your sky and your frog fingers are dry and you are going to come in and pre-wet the ball. You guys are professionals at this by now since we've been pre-wetting almost practically everything on here tonight. My ball is a little bit not round. Up here in the, where the crook between these two fingers is, there should be a little bit of blue sky. I'll handle that at the end. I'll go back and make that correction. But for now, I'm just staying where we're at okay so back to this crown color i think that's a nice color for the ball and again that was the quinacridone gold so i'm just going to paint the whole entire ball that color then we're going to give it a little bit of shading to make it look more three-dimensional um, in order to do three-dimensional stuff you have to put some light and some shadow in there and for whatever reason, I always, well, the frog's face is here. So I'm going to have the light be coming from the frog's face. So the light is coming from this direction, which means that this part of the ball right here would have a little more light on it. This part back here would have a little more darkness. And underneath his hand, there would be some shadow, but we're getting pretty technical then. And this is a really beginning, beginning class. So let's just go with some easy stuff. So we have whatever your normal yellow is. And then let's take, should we have some fun here? Hold on a second. I'm doing something over on the side to test this out. You may not like it, but it's kind of interesting. 
Okay, it's up to you. All right, so here's my paints, right? And we had this yellow, the quinacridone yellow. I'll put it right here. Then, if you have a nice red or pinkish color, pink would be better. I don't know if you have pink. Um, I have this pink called uh, quinacridone rose. It looks like this. It's very pink. But you can take the tiniest little bit. So there's hardly anything on this brush. I'm like dabbing it and dabbing it. Just a little bit in there. And you can warm up this yellow into almost like give you a sort of a sunset orange. And with that, I'm going to go on the back side here. Oops, I need a little more pink because it doesn't show up as much as I want. So I'm just going to take a little more pink. And there we go. I'm doing like a half circle back here to give myself some depth. In a minute, I'm going to do that again because <clears throat> the ball is still a little bit too wet right now. So while that's setting up, I'm going to take this Kleenex. No, I will do it easier than a Kleenex. Easier for you. Take your smallest brush, rinse it, and then blot it on your Kleenex so that you're getting like almost all the water out. It's damp, but there's no drips at all. And this is now called a thirsty brush. Your thirsty brush is like a vacuum and you can take it and you can lift out paint with it. So I think I let mine dry a little bit too long, this ball, but you can swoop over it. And am I gonna have success? A little bit, it's too subtle though, you can't see it, so I'll make it better so you can see. Normally you could lift out paint. It's called doing a lift, but you um, I could lift back to almost white paper But my ball got a little too dry. So instead I'm going to take this Kleenex And I'm going to blot a little bit of the color off there. Let me zoom in so you could see it better And I think I might be off camera so I'll move this so you can see better the results that I'm trying to achieve here are that I have Okay, I know, hold on. I'm not gonna speak until I can see on my camera that, that you can see the ball. Okay, you can see most of that ball. How about now? I think you can see better now. There we go. Okay, so we have this lighter area here. And if you want it even lighter, take a damp brush and just kind of agitate the surface here. You're kind of lifting or erasing, and then before that dries, take your Kleenex and blot. Don't rub, just blot, and you'll lift out some more color so that you have that light section there. And if you need it to be darker back on the back side, this is a chance to do another little run of whatever that color was back there. If you have to, you can even tip your paper so that it angles down this way so that that fresh wet paint that you put in kind of collects at the back side of this ball. And that is how you give it a little bit of dimension. If you want to be super fancy, you could do like a little bit up under here, just the tiniest bit. I would rather probably do more of a shadowy color, but since this is on my brush, you could do a little bit under his finger to kind of have a cast shadow. And there we go. Okay, take your hair dryer and dry the ball. And we're coming into the home stretch. We're going to do the ground and the pupil and be done. So I'm going to dry this. I know you can't see me dry because I'm on extreme close-up, but let's get you back to where you can see the whole guy. There we go. Okay. All you missed was me drying the ball. Nothing important. All right. Hanging in there? Am I making you nervous and crazy by going so fast? But we're going to finish, so it's good. I will probably do another one of these in June. I don't know exactly when, um, but I am taking requests. So if there's something that you want to paint, you can throw that in the comments, write a little note and say, I would like to paint a whatever. 
Um, and I'm keeping them as simple as possible. So no real crazy landscapes or, you know, if you want to paint a rose, that's kind of a little bit much for us on the first try. So something simple. Um, again, you can look at all the past ones either on YouTube at Margaret Blanchfield, or maybe it even has my middle name, Eve, I can't remember. Um, or you can go on to sacramentoartclasses.com and see some of them there. Plus, there are a few still left up on Facebook. Hi, Cindy. Thank you for your nice comment. Thanks. Okay, the ground. It looks like this. It has various colors of brown, and this is yellow ochre right here. This is kind of a chocolatey brown. It might be Van Dyke brown. I can't remember which brown I used. And I did actually throw a little bit of blue or gray blue, or if you have a Payne's gray underneath the frog for a little shadow, you can do that. So I'm going to, for sake of time, use my very largest brush to wet that whole bottom. I'm going to keep the fingers and the toes and everything dry. So later I'll have to go back in with my detail brush, but I'm just trying to get everything done real quick here. Don't get the ball wet. That beautiful ball that you just spent that time on. Ellie, you can watch this video later. Yes, um, it will be after, within a few minutes of the end of class, it'll appear as a recording on Facebook. And people have sometimes had a hard time finding the recordings. Some people find them by going into the old events, like just go to my page, Sacramento Art Classes, and look for events. Or some people have found them by um, searching, going on videos. Once you're at my page, click on videos and you'll have the choice there of all the different things that are up. You'll see this class and the others that are still up there. Um, and I'll leave it up for quite a while and then eventually it'll move somewhere else, whether it's YouTube or whether it's to my website. I'm not sure which yet. Okay, so now I'm just going in between the toes with the water and always being conscious of doing it quickly but carefully so that the paper doesn't dry out while I'm taking this time to go in between the toes here. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I didn't mean to cough right in your ear. Don't forget, give me your requests if there's something that you want to paint next time. And usually what I do is I put up a Facebook event and um, then I'll do like a little quick video of me holding up the painting. I didn't, I don't think I did that this time because it's the end of the school year. I'm a school teacher full time and so it's been crazy as we come to the last few days of school and throughout the year it's crazy. And by the way too, I'm, I'm starting a new job. I'm still going to be a school teacher, but I'm moving to a new school next year. I'm sad to leave the school where I am because I love that school, but um, it is very far from where I live. So I am going to work at a closer school and that will be a kindergarten through eighth grade where I'm the art teacher. Okay. So here comes a brown. I have two different browns. One's a little bit more of a gray brown and one's a little more chocolatey. So I'm kind of putting this gray brown closer to the body and underneath, hoping that it will feel like a shadow maybe. And since I wet everything, all I have to do is just touch this paint on and it's going to swim all in there to these little nooks and crannies. And I don't have to try real hard with my brush. It won't get on the ball because the ball is dry. And any little places that I missed, sometimes if I'm lucky, I just tip my paper a little bit and it swims in, but I could see I missed, I left some parts dry. So I'm just going to take this minute with my brush and my detail brush and just help it up to where it needs to be. That's pretty good. And now before we get any farther, I'll take that other brown that I said was more of like a warmer kind of chocolatey brown and I put that on here. It's pretty subtle, the difference. 
but there is a little bit of a difference. And then I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre, which was the color of the back of this crown. It's nice to use some of the same colors throughout your painting. So like you don't only see a color in one place. The pink that I used, I you only see that on the frog and that's kind of not super desirable. You want to bounce your colors around because then if if you only put pink in one spot, then the then the viewer's eye is just going to go right to that pink and say, hmm, why is that pink only there? How come it's not somewhere else? So I like to bounce it around and in a second I'll show you a way to put that pink someplace else. But before I do that, I'm going to bring some of that sky color down under here. So I have a uh, ultramarine blue, which is one of the sky colors. And it's going to seem weird to you at first because it's going to be this blue under here, but it'll mix in with the browns and it will become a shadow. So I'm going to go all up into these little areas in between the toes, any place where I want to have a little bit of shadow. It'll look really nice around the ball because blue and that orange that's in the ball, those are opposite colors and or complementary colors and they always look great next to each other. Think of red and green, purple and yellow, blue and orange. They look really nice next to each other. Okay, so here we have Froggy Shadow. Since the light is coming from his nose, he'd have kind of more shadow back here. Be sort of casting a shadow back in that direction. Oops, sorry, my hair was in that picture quite a lot, so let's fix that. Um, if it's too blue to you, just throw a little brown on top of it. Let it mix itself. Try not to manipulate it too much because it starts to look overworked. So there is that. If you need to, you can rock your paper or tip it left and right. Be careful of drips. There's a little bitty area. Let me zoom in. Right in between the fingers and the ball. This area right here should be sky blue. I'll get it later. And probably even a little bit up at the top of the ball, I could shave off. I could cover up some of that yellow with the blue because it's not perfectly round up there. It's, there should be a little bit of, or either that or make the frog's hand a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so the last thing is I told you that pink should not only go in one place. So here's something we can do. We get a little bit of that pink and put it onto the crown. And it's still gonna be a golden yellow crown, but there's a little hint of pink in there. And the viewer will say, oh, how great, they put some pink up there. My eye has somewhere to go. I'm traveling, my eye is traveling around the, the canvas. It makes you look like you know what you're doing too. Because when you look at it, you're not thinking, why is that a pink crown? You're, you're not, you still see that it is the color that you want um, the crown to be, but it has a, just enough of a little bit of a pink to catch your eye. Speaking of eye, we need to take care of that. And I don't like to use black because it's kind of a black hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of the blue from the sky here, it's ultramarine blue. And remember just a second ago, I said complementary colors. Um, they look great next to each other, but they don't always mix well. Well, you can also use them to your advantage if you mix them to get a gray or black color with colors that you've already used. So we've already used ultramarine, ultramarine blue in the sky. And if we use it in our gray or black that we're making, it's more harmonious than just using a black. So here I have this orangey color. And all I have to do is add, I like to always go darker into lighter. So the blue is darker. I'm going to take a little blue and add it into a little bit of this at a time. And pretty soon I get just a dark, let's get a little more blue. I get a dark kind of gray, green. And if it's not as dark as you want, you just add a little bit more blue. You don't have to do this. I'm just trying to teach you something new. You could use a Payne's gray. You could use a black if you want, but I just stay away from black because sometimes it's just like a dead color and I want there to be some life to the colors. So when you get what you like, if this eye is dry, don't do it when it's wet. You can pop that in there. And there you have your froggy eye. And that is it. That will dry a little bit lighter because 
watercolor um, fades as it dries, so it will dry a little bit lighter than that, but it'll still be a nice dark color. And let me zoom out so that you can see the whole entire thing here. Whoops, wrong way, wrong way. I really apologize for the weirdness with the technology at the beginning. It didn't go at all like I wanted, but at least we got enough fix <clears throat> to where you could see what I was doing here. Um, so by before the next one comes, I will have it all worked out where um, I can say a nice hello to you at the beginning, and I like to always come back on and say a nice goodbye at the end, but I, it was, it'll just be a wreck, so I'm going to like say goodbye like this. And um, I can't really get my face under there. Goodbye. <laughs> but I thank you so much for coming. Um, keep your eye on Facebook for the next one, which will be sometime in June. If you want to um, give me a request, something simple, I will work on that for us and do the event and post that. Please share with friends. Um, at the beginning of class, you saw me have this sign, which was a tip jar sign, and I always feel a little bit weird about doing it, but sometimes people like to give a tip, and you don't have to. It's not expected at all because this is a free class, but if you'd like to, this these are the ways that you can do that. Um, otherwise, I hope you just enjoyed coming to the class, and it was really nice to be back with you, and I look forward to being back with you with better technology next time. So that's it. Uh, this will be recorded and it'll stay on Facebook for a while. So watch it again later and share it with your friends. Thank you. Have a good night. See you soon.